Amen. Here in Acts chapter number 19 and verse number 34, we find the Apostle Paul in the middle of a pagan city named Ephesus. Yeah, come on, come on. It is a pagan city. Its roots are in paganism. Its roots are in false god worship. Its roots are in, in, in paganic traditions. And yet, uh, Paul is there to effect a change. Exactly. In other words, he's there to preach the gospel and to see people get saved and to see people come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so he goes to Ephesus with one goal, with one intention, and with one heart, and that is to make the name of Jesus Christ known in the city. Yeah, uh, but what he finds out is that God blesses him and God uses him. And the Bible reads in the 19th chapter of Acts that God actually wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul while he was in Ephesus so that everybody in all of Asia heard the word of God come from the lips and from the mouth and from the ministry of Paul while he was in Ephesus. But there was one problem and the problem was that Ephesus already had a God. And they already had a God. They already had him. Now I say God, I mean a little God, a false God, an idol God, a wrong God, a God that they wrongly worship and wrongly gave allegiance to and wrongly idolized and wrongly gave money to and wrongly gave their hearts and their minds and their, and their time to. Uh, this God was a false goddess, actually, a female God by the name of Diana. And so here comes Paul into the city of Ephesus and his job is to preach the gospel to people and to transform them and to give them the word of God which will transform them from children of darkness to children of light which will transform them from people that worship idols to people who worship the one yeah, and true and living so God right. and he has a lot of success and a lot of things go right for him but at the end of the day in Acts chapter number 19 he finds himself in a bit of a mess because his gospel and his God the one true God who has created heaven and earth and all that in them is run smack dab into the middle and smack dab into a fight with Diana. And so the problem was not that Paul's gospel was wrong. The problem was not Paul's approach. The problem was not that Paul wasn't loving enough. The problem was not that Paul wasn't kind enough. But the problem was they already had a God that they wanted to worship and they didn't want Paul disrupting the message of their God. God. Amen. Now I would submit to you ladies and gentlemen that America also has another God. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Psalms that all nations that forget God will be turned into hell. And so somebody said, well what? So what about all of our gods? Well this is so what? If you worship a wrong God and give your allegiance to a wrong God and serve a wrong God and give your time to a wrong God you're going to wind up in hell fire someday. And that's a big something. So I suggest you when you can get to Paul's gospel and hear the truth about Paul's God and my God and the Bible's God and that God is named Jesus. And he said he's the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way and no other path but through him. It's a big so what. Amen. And so I would submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that America uh, has false gods too. And there may be many of them, Brother Tim. So some of them may be money. Some of them uh, may be drugs. Some of them may be alcohol. But there's one that I want to deal with tonight, and that is the false god of sports. The false god of sports. Now hang with me. I don't think there's anything wrong with having to with going to a ball game. I don't think there's anything wrong with playing some sports. I know back in the day they wouldn't let you play anything in churches. When my dad was growing up and stuff, they wouldn't have a ball team or a ball club or anything like that. And I'm not there. I don't believe that. I think it's good to have fun. A month ago I taught a lesson in Bible study called Don't Forget to Laugh. I like to laugh. I like to have fun. I like to watch a good basketball game. I like to get out in the in the driveway and play basketball with the kids. But I'm going to tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, sports is not my God. Sports is not my hero. I don't give my life for sports. I don't wake up thinking about sports and going to bed about thinking about sports. I don't wake up with a bad 
basketball in my hand and a football uh, a tattoo to my forehead. Are you hearing me? Sports may be good, but if we're not careful, man, we'll get this thing all out of whack. And then when the gospel comes into our life, we'll sit around like the Ephesians and for two hours cram a chant. Great. It's Diana of the Ephesians. Great is the sports clubs. Great is the ball club. Great is the ball field. Great, great, great. And we'll just end up worshiping our sports gods. Somebody said, well, I don't know if I quite look at it that way. Well, let me give you the fight song to the U of M football club. Hail to the victors, valiant. Hail to the conquering heroes. Hail. You know what hail means? It means to worship. It means to praise. It means to honor. I don't hail Michigan football. I don't hail Notre Dame football. I don't. Come on, somebody say amen. Oh, that's right. Well, oh, 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 I told you all like preaching, right? Well, let me, tell, let me read to you Notre Dame's fight song. It says, rally sons of Notre Dame. Sing her glory. Sound her fame. You think maybe they're setting you up for a little bit of idolatry? You think maybe they're setting you up for a little bit of worship? You think that maybe they're setting you up for something so fanatical to pull off your shirt in 20 degree weather and paint an ND on your chest and your whole life is about sports and your whole life is about Notre Dame and you hail the victors and hail the giants and hail the this and the hail of that. Oh, you may not like it, but it's just true. If we're not careful, we'll let sports become our God. I just wanted to throw that Notre Dame stuff in there for my kids. Hallelujah. I'm a Michigan fan myself. And I really did appreciate the fact that Michigan football whooped on Notre Dame this year. Hallelujah. Amen. But do I hail Michigan football? Not a chance. Do I worship sports goddesses and gods? Not a chance. I want to give you five reasons why I think sports has become a god, a false god in this nation. And, I'll, and then I'll give it to you quickly and I'll go home. Look with me in Acts chapter 19 verse 24. And the Bible reads in verse 24, For a certain man by the name of Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain into the craftsmen. For he called together with the, he, for he called together with the workmen of the like occupation and says, Sirs, we know that by this craft we have our wealth. You know why they like Diana's worship so much? You know why Demetrius got so upset and ran for trying to run Paul out of town? Do you know why they didn't want the gospel? You know why they stood and cried for two hours? And great is Diana of the Ephesians because Demetrius was working silver. They had a false god named Diana, and Demetrius would build these silver shrines little idol gods uh, for, for Diana and he would sell them off into the public and people got so fanatical about it that they wanted one on the coffee table and one on the nightstand and one here and one there and I want to put it on my automobile and tattoo it on my forehead and take my shirt off and paint my chest gray is Diana of the Ephesians you know we're doing that in this nation for these sports heroes I'm telling you ladies and gentlemen the Bible tells us that the reason why Demetrius got so upset is because it was affecting his pocketbook because people were willing to pay big money to support their false gods. Now I'm telling you one of the reasons why I believe that sports has become a false god in this nation is because of the money people are spending to do it. Do you know that the average cost of one Super Bowl ticket for the night's game is $10,000? $10,000, the average ticket from the best seats to the worst. They put them all together, average it together. And if you're going to attend the football game tonight, wherever it's being played, you're going to pay for one ticket, an average cost of $10,000. I'm telling you, sports has become a god when we're willing to dish all of our money into it. We let our young people die, or excuse me, our old people die in nursing homes because they can't get the proper help and the proper care. And the whole time we're spending $10,000 to attend a football game. Something's wrong in this nation. Yeah, we work. Come on, you might as well say amen. Where we're giving all of our time and all of our money and all of our allegiance to these sports gods. Amen. Yeah. The cost of, of the Super Bowl ticket is $10,000. $10,000. 
Here's another one for you. Last year in the Super Bowl, $150 million was traded in gambling and betting. $150 million. The average NFL team worth is $2.9 billion. How do I know it's a false God industry? Brother Tim, because it's, a, it's making them plenty of money. I'm talking about the same people that throw a dollar fifty in the offering plate and get mad. Come on and get mad. If you take up a second offering to help the needy, come on. I'm talking about the same people that wouldn't buy their pastor a loaf of bread if he was starving to death and preaching for free. I'm going to sit around and pay $10,000 for a ball to club ticket. Yeah. You might as well say amen. You know it's the truth. This nation is crazy. This nation is out of whack. This nation is worshiping these false gods and these ball clubs and $2.9 billion is the average net team of the average net call worth of one NBA, NBA, NBA NFL team. NBA, NFL, don't really matter to me. One point six five. This is just a weird statistic. One point six five billion chicken wings will be eaten tonight. Wow. How in the world is America going to eat one point six five billion chicken wings? Hallelujah! I don't know, man. I tell you what. You know how much it would cost to, to buy and make and cook one point six five billion chicken wings? And the whole time we got homeless veterans. And the whole time we got children. That can't for medical care and the whole come on and the whole time our preachers are preaching for free we're working 70 hours a week squeezing in Bible studies and standing on their head to make it happen come on hallelujah the whole time we're shoving our old people off in the nursing homes and, and that are, are subpar and inadequate and the, come on you might as well say it you might as well say it man I'm telling this nation is shoveling all of its money all of its resources all of its time into these false gods and this is what I've discovered. You take a rock and throw it into a pack of dogs. And the only one that gets mad is the one that got hit. Come on. Amen. So if you're mad, it must mean you got hit. Hallelujah. Amen. $327 million worth of potato chips will be eaten tonight celebrating the Super Bowl. Three hundred and How do you even consume $327 million in potato chips and chicken wings, man? This nation is crazy. It's about time we realize there's only one Jesus. There's only one God that died for me. There's only one way. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't care if it's Notre Dame. Or you up in or the NBL or the NFL or the NFL FLC three four five. I'm telling you, there's only one God and there's only one Jesus worth giving your time, yeah, attention, and money to. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's only one God that died for you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Three hundred and twenty-seven billion million dollars in potato chips. One 30-second commercial tonight in the NFL Super Bowl will cost somebody $5 million. $5 million. And the whole time I got homeless vets. And the whole time I got police officers with inadequate gear to, to protect them while they're out in the streets protecting us. And the whole, come on. And the whole time people are dying of cancer and we're not showing enough money into it to, to invest into a cure. Why? Because we've erected a false god in this nation. We've erected a false idol. And it's the idol of sports. And people are fanatical about it. And they don't like you saying anything about it. And they don't like you preaching about it. And they don't like you teaching about it. But we are a Bible believing church and this Bible says there's only one man, only one God and he ought to be worshipped yeah, not these sports heroes so God be the Lord. Amen. 327 I'm, by the way I'm telling you I'm not against a sp sports in general, I think you should if you like it, enjoy them in moderation right. in understanding but man for, for dear Dear God in heaven, don't let us starve our children so we can bet on the football game. Yeah, that's right. God have mercy. Amen. 98.2 million viewers will watch 
the Super Bowl tonight. 98.2 million viewers. That's a lot of folk that are going to sit around. They told me today, I looked it up on Google. They said the average uh, the average time of the Super Bowl over the last 10 years has been 3 hours and 44 minutes from start to finish. 3 hours and 44 minutes. And what did they say? 89.2 mil, million people will tune into their television for 3 hours and 44 minutes while eating potato chips, drinking beer, shoving wine down their throats. Yeah. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this country is in a mess. This country is worshiping a God that cannot save them, a God that's going to yeah. fail them, a God that's going to let them down in the end. I'm telling you, Michael Jordan and, and, and all the other rest of them aren't going to help you. They wouldn't even pick up their call if you called them. They wouldn't even give you their number. But there's a Jesus who's already given you his number. Yeah. All you got to do is call him and he'll hear you. And I'm going to tell you, Carmen, if I'm going to give all my money away, it ain't going to be to Michael Jordan. It's going to be to Jesus Christ. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Here's the, there's, here's the statistics that really bother me. $1.9 billion in beer will be consumed this night. So that kind of tells me that about 98.2 million people will go to bed drunk tonight. Yeah, and some of them will never wake up because they drink so much, worshiping Diana for two hours and three hours and 44 minutes that they'll wind up, this slip, slip it yeah. off into the wild, uh, off into eternity, dying drunk on two point, uh, on 1.9 billion dead dollars worth of beer, malt beverages and cider. $644 million of wine will be consumed this night. This nation tonight is going to go to bed drunk Drunk! Yes, Drunk! Drunk! And what the Bible says, no drunkard will have anything or any part in the kingdom of God. I don't want to die drunk. I don't want to live drunk. And I'm not getting drunk on special occasions anyway. Oh, that's right. I'm going to serve God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let me get off the NFL for a little while. The UFC, they had a fight the other day. Uh, and they said that they, you had to pay to view the fight. And it was, they, it char they charged $64.99 to people if they wanted to watch this fight. And the fight was over in 40 seconds. You knocked that dude out in 40 seconds. You paid $64.99 for 40 seconds. You haven't given $64.99 in church offering in 10 years. Come on. What's wrong with this nation? They're worshiping false gods. They're standing around for two hours in Ephesus, getting mad at Paul for calling out, getting mad at Paul for saying anything about it, getting mad at Jason for talking about it. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I have a problem with hailing to Michigan football. I have a problem with singing glory to Notre Dame football. I have a problem with that. Amen. Sixty-four ninety-nine for the UFC. One fight, one night. Last forty seconds. 40 seconds. Not a lot of money for one fight, 40 seconds. There were other fights that night, but everybody knows the main fight is what everybody's really wanting to get to. Yeah. And they said, I think the statistics I looked up said around, the, all in all, through selling that fight that night, they made $260 million. $260 million. Let me read you another statistic. Let me shock you a little bit. I've been wanting to preach on it anyway, so I might as well just talk yeah, about it for a second. Come on. Every two minutes in this nation, a child is exploited in the human trafficking industry. Every two minutes. You think maybe we ought to take some money from the UFC and the NFL and give it to somebody that can fight this mess instead of raping all these children and abusing these kids and some dirty pervert one pulling up in a white van and stealing some kid and then you never see from them again? This nation's a mess and we need to come on, you might as well say amen. And we need to get back to worshiping Jesus and giving our funds where we can actually make a difference in this society. I know some of y'all don't like that, but you. You let them capture your kids and you don't see from them again yeah, in 20 God. years and you'll find out what it's like to realize that we should have quit worshiping Michael and we should have started worshiping Jesus. Yeah, that's right, God. Amen. Amen. On average, a child that is sold, some as young as eight 
years old. Eight years old. And they're walking along going to school and some... Yeah, go on, brother. Amen. What the Bible would say is worthy of death. Yeah. Amen. Somebody pulls up in a white van or whatever color van and, and, and puts them in a van and then steals them off into some uh, trafficking industry. And they say that on, that on average, a child will be raped 6,000 times in five years. And what we're worried about is who wins the stupid ball. Man, we're a mess. My kids are more important than the Super Bowl and NFL and NBA and all the rest of it. Take your money. Quit getting drunk and give some money to some people that can fight this human trafficking mess that's going on in the streets of our land. And I'm talking about over the last year, there have been arrests made that, that ranges from ER doctors to pastors of churches yeah, buying on, these kids off the dark web of the internet. Amen. But I'm going to give my money to Michael? No, no, no. I'm going to teach my kids to worship Michael? No, no, no. I'm going to take my shirt off and paint number 23 Chicago Bulls on my chest. No, no, no. I'm going to say, you know what? I kind of think that police officer that busted in that house and got that children out of trouble, that child out of trouble, is a real hero. That's a hero. That's somebody we ought to thank God for. Come on, hallelujah. A president, by the way, who just did the other day, signed over some $43 million or something to fight human trafficking. That's a hero. <laughs> Five thousand times in six years. Six this excuse me, six thousand times in five years. Here's another statistic. At least a hundred thousand children, girls and boys, are bought and sold for you know what? We have children in here tonight in the US every year. A hundred thousand children. This this nation is sick. This nation to go to bed drunk. This nation to go to bed with pornography on its yeah, ass. Come on, you know it's true. Come on, come on, this nation is sedated on drunkenness and fornication and raunchiness and filth and harming another person. Brother Rick, I've been, I've been back in my day when, when I was backslidden, I did a lot of sin and I did a lot of wrong things, but I'd never dreamed in my life of buying somebody and treating them like a slave and hurting them and harming them and watching them cry. I think that's a bunch of sick mess, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we need to be careful of what we're funneling all of our money to. And let me get off the NFL for a minute and get on to children's high school sports. We've got kid parents that'll buy three, four thousand dollars worth of gear and they come on, they gotta have the best Nikes, the best Adidas, the best this, Under Armour this, Under Armour socks, four billion dollars sweatbands and the whole time we won't give our money to even help, to help these children that are being hurt and abused at the same time we won't supply any extra supplies to the food pantry at this day. Come on! Amen. This nation is a mess. Amen. It's in a mess. Guess what the only thing that's going to help is? Not, not Michael. Amen. Amen. Not Michael. Not hailing to the victors. No. Not singing the glory of Notre Dame. The only thing that's going to help is a man named Jesus. And he wants to help. And he will help. But we as a nation need to quit forgetting God and get back to church. And get back to Jesus. So let me move on. It's where we spend all of our money. That's how I know it's a false god. Children's sports, people will cross land and sea to be a soccer mom and to get Johnny and Joey and Jilly and uh, Harry back and forth to every sport across town. And then they'll say to me, why does they got enough gas money to go to church? Come on. That wasn't what you said when you was driving to 52 different practices in 17 different cities. Come on. Sports is a god. False God. Amen. That's a God they're worshiping. It's a God they're idolizing. Number, number, number. That was just number one. Everybody still with me? Amen. Who's mad? All right. Praise the Lord. Everybody's with me. 
And I'm showing you saying, you tell me, Brother Jason, I can't go home and watch the Super Bowl. I'm not telling you that at all. I'm telling you, you want to go home after church and enjoy the Super Bowl. You have made the right decision to go to church. Amen. I'm proud of you for that. I appreciate that. I think, I, in fact, I was talking to Brother, Brother Rick Sr. night before church, and he said, I like sports, and I like the Super Bowl, but I think this place is more important than sports. Amen. That's right. That's the right attitude. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, America as a whole is sedated on drunkenness and booze and billions of dollars worth of whiskey and wine and bourbon, and they are too drunk to realize that our children are dying and being hurt and being harmed, and our elderly are living on the streets, and we can't get medical care for the people who need it, and people are starving under the weight of medical bills. All it takes is one good problem in your life with bad insurance, and it'll bankrupt you financially, and I'll guarantee you, Michael ain't going to come pay your bills. No, that's right, brother. Come on. And neither is the liquor industry. No, They're going to laugh at you and keep on moving. They're going to live in their $7 billion homes and not even care that the poor paupers are sedated and in bankruptcy and in debt. And come on, the whole time we're ripping up our shirts and painting their numbers on our chest. But there's a Jesus that a heal cancer. There's a Jesus that a heal a human trafficking survivor. There's a Jesus that can set this nation free. And by the way, I'm preaching him and I'm believing he's going to come to it. Number two, that was just number one. I gotta hurry up and close. Hallelujah. I got five of these. I think sports maybe has become a god in this nation because it's where we give our time to. Uh -huh. Number one, it's where we give our money to, but number two, it's where we give our time to. Look in the Bible in Acts chapter 19, verse 34. The Bible reads, But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours. Now that's longer than most Christians were in church this morning. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Come on. That's longer than most Christians have been in the Bible for a month. Come on. Yeah. It quiet in this on, Presbyterian on. church. As long as I preach it against human trafficking, people are with me, but I start preaching against some Christian. Come on. <laughs> on Hallelujah. Two hours. They cried out for the space of two hours, Brother Tim. And they did it in one accord. You know how long it takes? Uh, you know how much energy it would take to cry out for two hours? Uh, I kind of have an idea about that because during preaching, I preach for about 45 minutes and crying out the whole time. And by the end of it, I'm tired and ready to fall over. But two hours, man, two hours uh, worth of just crying out, great is Diana. They're doing that right now. I think Super Bowl's already started. Great is the Kansas City Chiefs. Great is the whoever at San Francisco. Francisco 49ers. Great, great, great. Drink a beer. Great. Smoke weed. Great. Eat some wings. Great. Eat a potato chip. Great. Have a Pepsi. Great. Look at pornography. Great. Come on. You know they're doing it. Oh, amen. That's for sure, brother. Amen. Amen. Brother Garland cooked before he passed away. I was in his hospital bed or in his hospital room. And he looked at me and he pointed his finger at me and he was getting ready to pass from his world. And he looked at me and he said, boy. I said, yes, sir. And he said, don't you ever. I like that. Don't you ever. Stop preaching the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah, oh, hallelujah. Thank Brother you. Garland, if you up in heaven watching, we're still preaching the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Thank you. Amen. Cried out for two hours. Great is Diana. That's longer than most church people are in church. Hallelujah. In a week's time. Amen. They, they, they summons their life down to one service a week. A quick in and quick out. Get rid of Sunday school. Get rid of prayer meeting. Don't pray for the sick. Don't visit the altars. We don't want anything to do with too lengthy services. After all, it's too cold in here. Or it's too hot in here. Or you preach too loud. Or you don't have this. Or you took my seat. Or come on. They're going to shovel thousands of people into a big dome tonight and they're all going to be spitting on one another and getting drunk. Come on! And shouting and cursing and screaming and fighting and hailing and worshiping. And that same crowd going to look at a good Bible-believing church and say, don't you need to shorten your services? Yeah, come on, brother. It'll take you an hour and a half to get out of the parking lot. That's right. That's right. Come on! 
Spent $300 on memorabilia here. So I got a Sim San Francisco 49ers hat while I'm in there with all the drunkards as you're drinking over. Come on. That's right. Amen. 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 This message ain't too popular tonight, is it? No. Oh, yeah. Amen. Thank you, Rashonda. I think I will. I just, I just took your line. Amen. Amen. The pastor enough. says, preach on. He says to himself, preach on. And he says, thank you. I think I will. <laughs> Amen. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, it's where people are giving their time to. I watch people by the end of a one-hour church service about have a hernia trying to get out the door. Yeah, one right. hour! On. <laughs> Sit there in a football game and watch it for three hours and 44 minutes out in the cold and blowing and snowing. It's where they give their time to. They don't know the difference between the epistles and the apostles. No. When you tell them to turn to Proverbs, they look by revelation. They don't know their Bible because they don't spend time in it. But they know every sports stand. They know every yeah. touchdown. They know who Jim Harbaugh was, Michael Jordan was, and that's about all I know. Praise the Lord. They know it all. Amen. But they cannot tell you, Brother Tim, three reasons why they believe the second coming is a certain time frame. They can't tell you three reasons why they believe in justification by faith alone. Yeah. They can't tell you three reasons why or three Bible verses why the Bible that Jesus' blood has washed away their sins. They have established their faith in t-shirt Christianity and they've studied sports and they know tons and tons and tons about sports. But I'm telling you, every football, every basketball, every baseball will burn someday. But there'll be a Jesus that if you truly know him, he won't burn and neither will you. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh. But that's on the national level. So let me talk to you a little bit about the local level. Springtime rolls around, and I leave my house and drive toward this church to go where God has told me to go. Come on. Yeah. And I pass churches on the way, and ain't too many one of them packed out. Come on. First car's in the building, you know me, the pastors, last one's out. Uh, come on. Yeah. And you look around and think, man, that pastor's got to have it rough because ain't nobody coming. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. And you don't even know him, but you pray for him as you're driving by just because you know sometimes what it's like. And I'm glad at this church, man, there's been a good numbers. Uh, yeah. And I'm glad even tonight on Super Bowl Sunday, we have good numbers. And I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, sometimes you watch that. And, or, or sometimes you got to be the guy to get there early and stay late and take the phone call and yeah. answer the text and meet this one and meet that one. And then somebody gets all bent out of shape because you didn't do it the way they do it. Well, I'll tell you what, you should do it yourself then. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. Amen. 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 Too hot in here, too cold in here. Need, wait, wait, you want a Pepsi? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> this nation is crazy. And it's actually this sports culture has drifted into the church. Yeah. And that's why they have Taco Bells and brewery, uh, 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 coffee breweries that come into church and donuts free to come in and recliners now instead of church chairs and views. They, they want it easy. They want it like a sports event. In and out, rush through, and then I drive through and I'm praying for all these pastors watching them strive and work because they love Jesus, honor God's word. And then I look around in springtime in the baseball field and it is so packed out. They got cars up the hill, down the road, three or four deep. I mean, come on, somebody. And I'm telling you, man, that I come out of church, Brother Tim, and there's still that many people there. They were there when I left. They're there when I get back. They are giving their time yeah. Amen. to the real God. Yeah, I love that preaching. I know it's tight, but it's right. right. Good old-fashioned straight preaching, so it'll fire you up. It'll either make you get right or it'll make you get out. Yeah, good, brother. Come on. And I'm not really interested in anybody getting out. I've had too many of them get out with me. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, Brother Rick. Brother Rick, I would, I would assume shut the church down and go to somebody else's church that I would compromise what the Bible says. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. Bible's right. It's where we give our time. You say, you think, you think there's something wrong with kids in sports? No, I don't. But I tell you, I told my kids the whole time that I've been raising them. Sports isn't our God. We don't hail, we, we don't hail sports heroes. Yeah. Amen. We don't paint tattoos on our chest. Amen. That's right. We, come on. We're not missing church to go to sporting events. Amen. We're not doing that. We're going to be a church family. We're going to go back to church because I have a responsibility not to make you a basketball star. I have a 
responsibility to make you a blood bought sanctified child of the most high God. That's where my aim is. That's where my goal is. That's where my direction is. That's what I wake up thinking about and go to bed thinking about. That's what I try to raise you to do and raise you to understand. And I know that it's strange and I know that it's anti this culture. But I'll tell you what, all three of my kids are still in the house of God today. And not because they have to be, because they want to be, because I raised them the church is more important than Chicago Bulls. Yeah, that's good, brother. Come on. Amen. 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 We had to cancel the church, the church service the other day because it was snowing. I don't know how long ago that was. Funny thing about canceling church when it's snowing is people get mad at you when you cancel church and it's snowing. And then, then when it ain't snowing, you don't cancel church, they don't come. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, come on, brother. Amen. I text my parents that morning, myself and Rashonda and my dad and mom were texting, and I told them, I said, man, we've got a lot, we've got a lot of elderly people that go to our church, and I could probably make it, and I could probably go, but I'd feel real bad about getting them elderly folks out of their house, and then they slip and fall and hurt themselves, and yeah, come on, and on crutches and canes and everything else, and that was my thought process. I wanted to be in church as much as everybody else did. Yeah, that's right. My kids looked at me and said, Dad, we ain't going to church. I said, no, I think we're going to cancel that. And you know what? They didn't go back to bed and say, man, I just can't wait. I'm just so glad we canceled church. They were disappointed. They was upset with more upset with me than anybody else. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, you raise your kids in the nurture, the admonition of the Lord. Bring them up serving God. Make them realize church isn't an option. Church is a plan. And it's not only not an option. It's not somewhere we have to go. It's somewhere we get to go. Hallelujah. Amen. We enjoy going. But i got to hurry and close, don't I? I've been preaching way too long. How long have I been preaching? Oh, amen. Thank you, sis. Amen. And they cried out for two hours. People will watch a three-hour and 44-minute football game, and that is about the same amount of time some people will go to church for a month. Right. Yeah, for sure. Come on, think about that. Amen. Month. They want you to shut down Sunday school, shut down Wednesday night, shut down prayer meeting, shut, come, come on, yeah, yeah. shut down extracurriculars, shut it all down. We don't really care There's too much about God and the church. And they got 35 inches worth of dust on the Bible, but they got the ESPN network pulled up and tied up four different TVs in the living room so they can watch the Bears and the Bulls and the Giants and the this and the that all at the same time. And you say, Bro, brother, hey, did you, did you know that the book of Revelation is in the Bible? Well, I thought maybe it was something. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Would you know where it's at? Well, ain't it between the testaments? Yeah, that's right. That's a joke. That's a joke. No, it's not between the testament. It's at the end of the oh, in the New Testament. Hallelujah! I said, "Old Testament myself." Hallelujah! But I'm telling you, it's a mess when we know more about sports than we do Jesus. Yeah, amen. Amen. So I think sometimes I think sports has become a god in this nation because of the time people are giving to it. I also think it may become a God in this nation. This is going to be tight. Don't get mad at me here. Because if sports is the God that many people are worshiping, then the players uh -oh, are the idols. Diana, Diana was the God. She was the, excuse me, the goddess of Ephesus. She was the one that everybody worshipped in name. They knew her as Diana. But Brother Rick, everybody had, according to the Bible, everybody had their own silver idol. Mom, everybody had their own silver idol. That, that's, why, that's why Demetrius got so upset, Brother Gene, because he, he was running out of work because Paul's gospel was coming into Ephesus and converting people and they were throwing out their idols. And so that way, so everybody, oh, Brother Tim has got their own idol. Idol now, and so I so the Diana is my God, but this is my idol. This is my idol. I want to be like Mike. I don't even know the song anymore. Y'all remember the jingle, don't you? Eat your Wheaties, hallelujah. Now, I haven't watched sports in 15 years, but you know, Michael Jordan, everybody want, want to be like Mike, something like that. You, never mind, y'all y'all missed it. Well, you want to be like Mike, are you that or I didn't lay it down right? <laughs> you want to be like Mike? No, I don't want to be like Mike. And I'm not keep teaching my kids to be like Mike either. I want my kids to be not even like me. I want them to be like the one who died for them. I want them to be like Jesus. I want them to wake up thinking about Jesus. If there's a good role model you should follow, it ain't Mike or LeBron or 
the, the other goofy boy that plays for the Warriors. It ain't any of them cats. You know who it is? It's Jesus. Be like him. Honor him. Worship him. Idolize him. And let your life be conformed into his image, not Mike's. You end up thinking you're like Mike. You end up thinking that nobody can win except you. You end up thinking the Bulls would have never won but without you. And maybe they wouldn't have. I don't know. But you, you take somebody. I think there was a guy named Scotty Pippen who played alongside of him. Right. Kind of helped that whole thing. Yeah. But, in, but come on. Yeah. You start, I'm not even a sports guy, but I do remember that. Yeah. Another guy named Horace Grant who wore them ugly goggles. Yeah. <laughs> come on, y'all remember these things. Yeah. Dennis Rodman was one of them cats back in the day, too. I Amen. remember loving this Amen. stuff. Amen. Amen. I don't teach my kids to be like LeBron. Come on. Amen. We don't idolize LeBron. Amen. 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 So if anybody, so if the, if the sports is the God, then the players are the idols. And what do we do? We wear their jerseys, man. When we have it, come on, we wear their jerseys. We go to the store and buy them. And I'm going to be like Mike yeah, or uh, Reggie Miller or uh, Beyonce or whoever else is playing basketball. You see how little I know about it? Hallelujah. It's a joke, y'all. I know Beyonce sings. I can do good things. <laughs> amen. I don't want to be. Uh, amen. I don't teach them to be idol worshipers. No. Amen. amen. This last week, a major tragedy hit our nation. And I call it major not because who was involved, but because any time somebody dies, it's a major tragedy. Anytime a plane or a helicopter goes down, it's a major tragedy. Yeah, sure, Anytime little girls die, Amen. it's a major tragedy. Yeah. Anytime dads die alongside of little girls, it's a major tragedy. It's not because it's a major tragedy. Come on, because of who was in. It's a major tragedy for everybody involved. But I tell you what, this this last week I have seen more stats on Facebook about loving uh, this sports uh, figure than I have about from Christian people about loving Jesus in the last decade. Yeah. Yeah. Decade. Did you know in the same time period in our nation, there was a pastor in Nigeria who preached the gospel and stayed faithful to Jesus, and the, and the Muslims kidnapped him and, and put a ransom on his head, and he couldn't raise the money in time. But of course, we as a nation spent $2.9 billion on booze for our Super Bowl tonight, but that pastor couldn't raise the money in time. And so you know what they did, Dad? The same week, the same time, his head was chopped off by the Muslims. They decapitated him. Because he couldn't raise the money. But I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, these sports teams are worth $2.9 billion Because we're idolizing them. And we're idolizing the teams. And we're idolizing the players. And we're giving all of our money and all of our time and all of our allegiance. And then you got a pastor on the back side of the world that nobody's even heard of. And he says, I will not deny Jesus. That is my hero. Amen. 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 You know who my hero is? Him. Amen. Not because he's my dad, but because he's my pastor. Yes. Come on. You know who my heroes are? A guy, a gentleman that's passed away now. His name is Garland Cook. And he looked at me in the hospital bed. And he said, don't you ever stop preaching the truth. And any time I would think, oh, Sister Sue, about compromising, I remember that moment. And think to myself, I got a charge to keep. Somebody who was an elder in my faith, somebody who was a leader in my life, looked at me in his final days and said, don't compromise. The truth. Yeah, Don't do it. Thank you, Lord. That's my hero. Amen. You know who my hero is? A lady by the name of Sunny Cook. And she taught me Sunday school when I was an eight-year-old boy at the Community General Baptist Church in Waterloo, Michigan. Yeah, good. Amen. That's my hero. Amen. That's my hero. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I was a young boy. Young boy, smart, smart, probably smart mouth. I'd walk in her room, Brother Tim, and I'd put my head, I'd never forget it. Because now if I, was, if I was my parent, I'd smack me so hard, I'd smack me in the next week. <laughs> I would. My, my dad and mom, they just didn't know what I was doing, and Sister Sonny was too gracious to tell them. 
I'd put my head down on the Sunday school table, disinterested, uninterested, like a little, uh, like a little boy, uh, upset and thinking I was too cool for Sunday school. And you know what she would do? She would just keep on teaching. That's right. That's my hero. And wait a minute, she may not have been my hero then, but she's my hero now. You know who my hero is? My parents who worked all their lives to put clothes on my back. And the last time I checked, yeah. Michael didn't put none of them there. Yeah. You know who my hero is? The every preacher that hasn't compromised the truth, who stands in the pulpit week after week with little support and little help, but still proclaims and preaches and heralds the truth. And they're not doing it to make money. They're doing it to make disciples. Amen. Hallelujah. For the gospel. That's my hero. Thank you, Jesus. That's my hero. You know who my heroes are? People who get up to sing songs to contribute to church services. Yeah, glory. Those you. are my heroes. Amen. You know who my heroes are? A president that gives $42 million uh, to, to fight human trafficking in this uh, sick, perverted nation that we're living in. Now you say what you want about the president, but I tell you what, I appreciate that. I tell you what we do, need to start funneling some money and resources toward that stuff to combat some of that stuff and put some of those people in prison. Amen. That's right, brother. Mm -hmm. That's my hero. I've seen people talk more in the last week about loving basketball players, Christian people, mm -hmm. than I have heard them talk about loving Jesus in a decade. Yeah. Something's wrong. Yeah, amen. Do you know a police officer died in the line of duty this last week? She's my hero. Come on, might as well say amen. She's my hero. Why? Because when I get ready and I have trouble in my house and somebody breaks in to harm me and harm my family, first of all, I got my own protection at home. Amen to that. Hallelujah. It takes at least seven minutes to get there. It won't take me seven minutes. Hallelujah. Come on. That's right. Amen. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, the framers of the Constitution said. And I kind of take that seriously. Amen. 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 But you know what? You tell you, you know who my heroes are. That we know every time I pick up the phone and dial 911 because I'm in an emergency, there's somebody who gets paid just a little bit over minimum wage that says, This is 911. What is your emergency? That's my hero. Yeah, come on, brother. Amen. You know what she does? She dispatches a police officer or a paramedic or, or a fireman to my house to aid me in surgery, to aid me when I'm in an emergency. Yeah, yeah. And they don't know me and they don't owe me anything, but they put their life on the line and fight fires and then arrest criminals. Come on and, and take care of people and get them to the hospital. Those are my heroes. It was a day in this nation, Brother Ray, when we recognized that police officers were heroes. When we recognized that men Military men were heroes. Yeah, awesome. When we recognize that on 9-11, when all the people were running for safety, police officers and firemen were running toward the building that was collapsing while other people were running away. Those men and women, people that I've never even met, never even know their names, those are my heroes. Yeah, come on, brother. Amen. The pastor died in Nigeria, and people don't even know. It's insane. That's right. Two. Oh, I gotta hurry and close. I have been preaching for too long. No. Two military service and personnel died in Afghanistan this last week. Yep. That's my hero. Yeah. You say you're trying to say uh, that you don't care about any, anybody else's sports teams or sports players. You don't care what happens. No, I do. I think it's a terrible tragedy. But I'm just telling you, man, I have never a day in my life worshipped a sports figure. Why? Because when I came to know Jesus, I threw away the idols called Diana. Yeah. And I started serving Jesus. And he gave me a new outlook on life. And my outlook was this. People that are actually willing to help other people are the real heroes. Yeah. Good. People who get to church early to meet people at food pantries to give them food yeah, because they're hungry. Jesus. That's my hero. Amen. People who go to Walmart doing a grocery shop and bringing extra canned goods and non perishable items to restock the food pantry. Those are my heroes. Yes, yes that's good, brother. Amen. Amen. I think number one, number three, uh, that sometimes these sports are becoming a god, the sports for teams and so forth are becoming a false god to people because their players become idols. 
Thirdly, I got to hurry and close. Man, I really do. Everybody's ready for me to go home. Preach on. Uh, people think that their children learn more from a ball field than they do the scriptures. Yeah. I think that may be a good indication that these sports teams are becoming false gods. Yeah, amen. Brother Brother so he said, Brother Jason, uh, we, we, how are you, uh, gonna, how are you going to teach your kids teamwork? Sunday school? Right. Who would have thunk it? Amen. Who would have thunk it? That if you get a bunch of kids in a room and give them all a project to work on, you say, hey, you do this and you do this, and the end goal is this, that they can all put their heads together, their time together, and their attention together, and they can learn teamwork. And Brother Tim, they're not even missing church to do it. They're not on a ball field doing it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with sports. And I'm not telling you never let your kids play sports. I'm telling you, don't let sports take over your life. Amen. That's right, brother. Amen. Who would have guessed that you could put them on Sunday school and they can learn teamwork? Well, where are kids going to learn uh, perseverance? Well, I don't know. Maybe give them a hard math problem and then help them get through it. And they feel like a failure at the beginning of it. But you help them and you teach them and you get alongside of them. And you say B equals C plus D and 3 and 4 and 4.7.3.2. 4.2. And you get it all together and they come through the end of that math problem. They're at the beginning feeling like they couldn't do it. But at the end, because you got alongside of them. Not because somebody taught them how to swing a ball back, but because you got alongside of them and trained them. Yes. Yeah, that's right, brother. Amen. They learned perseverance. They, come on. That's right, right. Well, where are they going to learn hard work and work thing? Ethic? I don't know. Well, where did people, where did children learn that at before sports became a god in this nation? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe like by doing some chores. Yeah, that's good, brother. Amen. Where are you going to learn work ethic? Go take out the trash. Uh, come on. We got, we, got, we got kids that parents run them around to every sport and cross town. And then you, you tell them to take out the trash and they act like you're asking them to donate a kidney. Right. Yeah, come on, brother. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's true. I kind of think my kids, and that's the way I'm raising you guys, by the way. And you're either going to grow up someday and you're going to appreciate it. You're going to grow up someday and not like it at all. I don't know which yet. I kind of think that you serve Jesus because you love him personally. That's right. Amen. Not because I make you. That's right. I tell you what, they say, I've always raised my kids that they can learn more from the scriptures than they can a ball field. Amen. Amen. Didn't Paul tell Tim? Paul told Timothy one day, he said, From a child, thou hast known how to play t ball. From a child, though hast thou hast known sports. From a child, thou hast known uh, how to run faster than anybody else. From a child, you've known how to do the discus and the shot put and all this. No, he said to Timothy, from a child, thou hast known the scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You know what I've done all my life with my kids? I have tried to have fun. We've had fun. We've had good times. We've been to amusement parks. We've been to play basketball in the driveway but my number one goal my whole life as their dad has been to give them the word of God yeah, that's right buddy. amen thank you Lord and they sometimes you can tell no more scriptures than adults who have been Christians for a long long amen. time <clears throat> I think when parents start thinking the only way to teach children is sport maybe sports has become an idol Number five, and I'm closing. I'm hurrying. I'm out of here. I'm out of here because I probably already said enough to offend the entire country tonight. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me offend churchmen then for a little while. Not you, but some churchmen. I think sports is becoming God when we allow sports to take over the church. Yeah, that's for sure, brother. Come on. Take over the church. Amen. God help us. I'm not shutting Sunday night service down. Because tonight's Super Bowl. No way. No. In Jesus' name. Ah. And I'm not dragging a 55 inch to 75 inch television in here and putting the Super Bowl on television and when, instead of worshiping Jesus and honoring Him and lifting up our hands and opening up the Word of God and loving on one another and testifying and yeah, seeing what God will speak yeah. to us and what God would say to us. Well, instead, we'll just have the Super Bowl tonight. It'll just be one of them fun nights. Now, listen, it may be Super Bowl Sunday to 89.98.2 million people, but to me, it's the Lord's day. To me, it's Jesus' day. To me, it's the day to honor. 
honor him and love on Jesus. Amen. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go home and watch the Super Bowl, you can go home and do that. Feel free. Uh, don't get mad at me. I didn't tell you not to do that. I didn't tell you sports was bad in moderation. I'm telling you, in idolatry, sports is bad. Yes. Right. Amen. You know what they'll do? They'll pull in big screens right into the middle of the sanctuary. And they'll watch the Super Bowl tonight instead of go to church. That's right. They've been doing that since I was a kid. And they look at me and say, what are you going to do for church tonight? I say, I'm going to go to church and preach. What else is there to do? Yeah. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to worship Jesus. What else is there to do? You mean to tell me you're not going to get in on the billion dollar sport? No, I'm not. How much did you gamble for the Super Bowl? I don't gamble at all. Hallelujah. Let right. alone on the sports events. Amen. 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 I don't. You know what? When I was a kid, at one point, I didn't remember how long ago it was. I really don't watch sports, to be honest with you. But when I was a kid, at one Super Bowl halftime show, I believe it was... Man, I can't remember the lady's name. But nevertheless, somebody pulled off her outfit right in the middle of the whole country and forward of the whole world. Yeah, Janet, Janet Jackson. and yeah, yeah, I was thinking it was her. That's right, Janet Jackson. You mean to tell me I'm going to bring that into my church and you watch the Super Bowl? Watch Janet's clothes being pulled off. Not a chance, buddy. I tell you what, this place isn't a temple uh, of idols. This isn't Diana's house. This is Jesus' house. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know what they're going to do tonight? They're going to show sports commercials that are beyond filthy. You think I'm going to bring that into church and watch that? Not a chance. And I suggest, by the way, you mute the commercials and shut down the commercials yourself. Amen. Amen. Now, if you want to watch the game. Well, now that I've offended half the world, <laughs> God is good. Let's stand today in the house. Yes, of He is. Thank you, Lord. Amen. How many of y'all still love me? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. I like all them hands going out. That's beautiful. Amen. God is good. God is good. I, again, I'm not telling you that sports are evil. I'm not telling you that sports in moderation are bad. I'm not telling you not to enjoy a ball game with your family. I'm telling you, don't worship sports. Yeah, that's for sure, brother. Amen. Don't let sports become a God in, your, in this nation and in your life. They tell me, they say, Brother Jason, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm a faithful Sunday night churchgoer. Faithful Sunday church go. But on Super Bowl Sunday, I won't be there. No, my. Okay. Yeah, okay. But don't worry. I'll be back next Sunday. But I've discovered that if you miss one Sunday night for the Super Bowl, yeah. you'll end up missing two Sunday nights for Lu I Love Lucy. Yeah, I'm Just because you don't feel like it. And people that told me that I'm just going to miss this one church, this is one church service for the Super Bowl. It led into a pattern that now you'd be shocked to see him come. Yeah, for sure, brother. Amen. 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 Dear, but you know what we need? We need a revival in this nation. Yes, my Lord Amen. Jesus. We Amen. need an outpouring Amen. of the Holy Ghost in this nation that would wake people up out of Diana worship. Yes. Yeah, good, brother. Come on. Father, we love you. We thank you for the yes, word of God. Thank we thank you for Lord. truth. We thank you for the word of Jesus Christ, God. We, God, we, God, we may not worship sports in here, but we may have other idols in our life. We may have other things that take up our time, our attention, our allegiance. God, point those things out to us that we could be the people of God, a people ready, a people fit, a people without wrinkle or blemish or any such thing, God, a people that give our funds into legitimate trade yes, and Lord. into legitimate channels, a people that give our time into good sort, good things that that. that that foster spiritual growth and spiritual life. And Father, we pray a special prayer today for this nation. God, by the end of this night, somewhere around millions of people will go to bed intoxicated, having filled up on potato chips and chicken wings and beer and wine and vodka. And Jesus, you said in your word, the Bible reads to me, according to the Apostle Paul, that no drunkard shall have, a, have any place in the kingdom of God. So Father, I pray for mercy for those people. I pray that they wouldn't die tonight of, of drugs overdose and alcohol overdose. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you get a hold of their heart and send forth the Holy Ghost conviction into their life and speak to them and convince them, God, that wine is a mocker and there's only one Jesus and there's only one God and there's only one reason to worship and only one reason to get excited. And, and Father, revive church attendance in this nation again. God, revive the hunger in the hearts of the people to attend church. And dear God, bless the churches that are still standing strong and still standing faithful to save the lost and reclaim the backslidden and baptize with the Holy Ghost. 
Washington. Father, I pray a special prayer for our heroes tonight. There's going to be a lot of heroes in police cars that are going to turn on the lights as they go to accidents from drunk drivers and DUIs. God, I pray for those police officers that you'd protect them and keep your hand of protection upon them. And God, let them not be harmed and let them not be hurt. And Father, I pray for our military men and women across the world today to be fighting in wars and keeping us safe. And I pray for the families back home. God, I pray for our true heroes. And I pray, God, for pastors that are still standing strong, true heroes. I pray for Sunday school teachers that have children put heads down, but they just keep going because someday those heads will be at the heads of adult preachers that stand behind the pulpit. And so they just keep going. God, give those Sunday school teachers strength in the name of Jesus. Father, we need revival. We need an outpouring of your spirit. We need a move of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, move among us. Let us not preach alone. Let us not pray alone. Let us not evangelize alone. Let us not come to church alone. But Jesus, when we come, meet with us and let your spirit move upon us and revive fire and excitement and hunger. God, that we would not even desire to paint letters on our chest in honor of idol sports heroes, but that we would honor, that we would desire to put some clothes on and to dress modestly and to love, come on, and to love Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God, we pray for our nation. God, we pray for our nation. God, I pray for those little children tonight that will be human trafficked, that will be sold into modern-day sexual slavery. And God, I pray for them. God, I would help them if I could, but I don't know how. God, I pray for them. God, I pray for them. Holy Ghost, help them, I pray. Help them, I pray. Help them, I pray. God, help them, I pray. I pray for the parents of those babies, God, and somehow the baby went missing and they don't know, God, where they are. I pray for those parents. God, I pray for this nation. This nation needs so much help. And God, we may be in a time of economic prosperity. God, but the truth is, it seems like the nation is getting further and further and further and further into sin. Deeper every day. Deeper every day. I pray for deceived Christians. God, there are many of them. You said in the last day many would come say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And then you would confess to them that you never knew them. I pray for them. God, that their eyes would be open. God, I pray for the backsliders. God, those that have walked away from God and walked away from the church, but there's still a praying mother and a praying father out there. God, save those children. Save those children. Speak to their heart. Draw them unto yourself in Jesus' name. God, protect us as we go home. Protect us as we go home. Revive prayer and desire and scripture and desire for scripture. God, forgive me of any idols that might be in my life, any Dianas that I have erected. God, whatever they may be, cleanse me of them in Jesus' name, I pray.